Hi, uh, my name's James Attlee and the book I've written is called Isolarian, A Different Oxford Journey. And I first wrote this book, um, it first came out in 2007, um, but a new edition has just come out partly through um, the support and the encouragement of Blackwell's, published by And Other Stories, um, the fabulous Sheffield-based publisher. And um, so it's very nice to be here talking about it at Blackwell's today. So what's the book about? Well, it's a kind of travel book, but it's a travel book um, about going on a journey in the neighbourhood in which you live. The idea that you could write a travel book just by stepping through your front door and keeping your ears and eyes open and being um, ready to follow any lead that came up, any chance encounter, any chance conversation. Um, I wrote it uh, around 2005, 2006, first published in 2007, as I said, um, at a particular time um, when there were questions being asked after um, various incidents about uh, multicultural Britain. And I wanted to just go out into my own neighbourhood, which I perceive to be a very vibrant, um, community-minded place, and take the temperature of the waters, as it were, and see what I could find out about Britain, and indeed cities worldwide. And uh, one of the quotations that inspired me comes from William Carlos Williams, the American poet who said, only the local is truly universal. And so I wasn't writing a guidebook um, to a particular place. I was trying to understand how cities work and what are the forces that shape them. And as I went on that journey um, up the road that connects the old university city that so many people know from watching Inspector Morse or reading Brideshead Revisited um, or accounts of the antics of our current Prime Minister in the Bullingdon Club. Um, that road goes all the way um, from Magdalen Bridge, from the plain um, to Cowley, to the car factory that in the 1920s doubled the population of Oxford. Um, so in other words, um, it's a street that connects the two different Oxfords that exist side by side, one of which attracts millions of tourists every year from all over the world and is known um, and is iconic, and the other which I felt really, for a lot of people, remained to be discovered. Have they not travelled within the land so that they should have hearts with which to understand or ears with which to hear? Quran twenty two forty six. I live in a famous city, a city that's been sold to you in a thousand ways. A myriad of writers have set their dramas upon its ancient streets, discoursed upon its architecture and provided guides to its quads and colleges. Few even mention the Cowley Road, let alone the people who live and work there. Many of its inhabitants have made their own journeys from far away under all kinds of circumstances. They brought with them not only their cuisine, but also their beliefs, their values, their trades, their prejudices, the stories of their past and their hopes for the future. This is the other Oxford, the one never written about. This city has dispatched anthropologists, explorers, scientists, authors and poets to every nation represented on Cowley Road. Perhaps it's time to flip the coin and see ourselves through their eyes. In 1994, the artist Francis Elise walked through the streets of Havana wearing a pair of specially constructed ma magnetic shoes. Three years previously, he'd taken a magnetised metal dog that he christened the Collector for a walk through the streets of Mexico City. At the end of these strolls, both the shoes and the Collector were covered in the metal detritus of the city. Somehow, this accretion was redolent of the overheard conversations, snatches of music, smells and other sensory impressions that one gathers on an urban walk. I have no magnetic shoes. Instead, I carry a notebook, a pen, 
and an old-fashioned cassette recorder loaded with magnetised tape with which I intend to capture the sounds of the voices I encounter.